Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome back to the Humble Servant Homestead, guys. Today we are out here. Now, it's been uh, plenty of questions been asked. Um, how do we mix our neem oil and castile soap? Okay, and so today I am here. I'm going to show you guys how we go about mixing the neem oil and castile soap. Now, right here we have the Azera, and we'll talk a little bit about this one here in just a moment. And right here we have the Spinosite. Okay, now we're not going to do much talking because previously I've done a video showing you guys how we go about mixing and also applying. Uh, the spinosad here to the plant okay so I'm not going to talk much about that one if you want to see a bit more about this one reference back to that video now this is the topic of the show here today we're going to go ahead and deal with the neem oil and castile soap okay so now this right here give you a close-up the brand of uh, neem oil that we use now this neem oil right here have 70 percent neem oil now when you go to look for uh, your neem oil make sure you have at least about 70 percent now that is a good dosage you can get a hundred percent neem oil but you want to make sure that you are mixing it just right because it will burn your plant okay all right so as far as the castile soap now the brand of castile soap or I wouldn't say the brand the brand is the same but the one we used last year was different it doesn't matter what kind of castile soap you're using just make sure that it's pure castile soap now this one right here have a bit of peppermint in it mm -hmm. and that is fine because peppermint also help to repel bugs as well so okay? what he's saying the fragrance we use a different fragrance still um, dr. Bronner's but this year we were able to get the peppermint in a larger quantity and a cheaper price so that's the castile we're going with this year but last year same company different fragrance yes okay now the neem oil that everybody been asking and so right here what I have is a tablespoon you need a tablespoon okay so for every gallon of neem oil that you will be for every gallon of what well excuse me <laughs> for a gallon of water you need one tablespoon of neem oil now like I tell my wife I said today I am going to go ahead and show you guys how we go about mixing it. So one tablespoon for one gallon of water and also one tablespoon of the castile soap. All right? Now, oops, and that's okay. This, if you go over a little bit more than a tablespoon with the Castile, that is fine. Now, I'm going to tell you guys one of the reasons also why I use the Castile soap with the neem oil. Okay? Remember, this is a oil. It's oil. Now, the Castile soap helps to break up the oil in the neem. Okay? So whenever I pour my water in, that oil won't uh, curl together and it's able to break up easily. Now, another thing that I also do when I get ready to mix my Castile soap, use warm water, okay? The warm water helps also to loosen up that Castile, uh, loosen up the neem oil as well. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to pour one gallon of water inside of here. Okay, and so guys, that right there is how I mix the neem oil and castile soap. Now, the neem oil and castile, what do I apply to in the garden? I, you can apply to your brassicas, your fruit trees, your peppers, and the callaloo. That's what I also use it 
uh, my lettuce, well not my lettuce, but my uh, cabbages, you know, my brassicas. That's what I use it on. Now, one of the things that you need to pay close attention, attention to, if you to spray this neem oil and it's maybe say burning your plant, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna not do a full teaspoon. You wanna do just a little bit just a little bit okay because what happened is it's maybe too strong all right and so you don't want to burn your plants because yes it will burn your plant or leave a certain film on the leaf all right and so of course you know what I apply this to as well is the squash and it's to prevent the squash vine bores okay now I use this in addition to the dire tomaceous earth. This right here we also use in the garden for pests as well. Now the only downfall with the dire tomaceous earth is is if you're inside of your garden and you are overhead watering. If you apply this here today and you overhead water today, you're going to have to come back in and reapply your dire tomaceous earth. Now, this year we are using drip system. So, to be honest with you, when I apply my neem oil and castile soap, I don't have to come in as often and spray for pests in the garden. This right here with my drip system will last me up to one week before I have to come back in and reapply. But because those vine boards, they are active and they're all about even your butterfly on your brassicas and stuff like that, uh, twice a week would be fine uh, with your squash uh, to take care of those uh, bugs. All right, and so the Azera here. Now, this here is the Azera, and one of the and the reason why we are using the Azera here on the homestead is because yes, we do grow lots of peppers, uh, preferably Scotch bonnet peppers, and so. This year, this particular year, for some reason, uh, the aphids pressure was very, very high, okay? And so I was hitting them with the neem oil and castile soap, and <laughs> it was affecting them, but it was very, it was very little effect, and so we had to pull out the Azera on them, guys. We had to pull out the arsenal, guys. We had to pull it out. And so this right here, um, we apply it the first time and within that period of time we come on in and we observe our plant to make sure that uh, the aphids and all that they're dying and everything like that so if it's not affecting them right away like that what we'll do uh, a week later we'll come back in and we will reapply the Azera again okay and so so far we have taken care of that problem but it was it was a uh, yes. They did. They, they came in and they was trying to do their thing. They but were we trying. Stop them. <laughs> we stop them in the track. But none of the less, guys. This is how we mix our neem oil and castile soap. But none of the less, that is it right there. Wait a minute. You have to be specific about that Azera. That Azera, guys, is not something that you would use on a regular basis. That's if you have. A real infestation like if you just can't get a handle on your bug problem with the neem oil and castile soap or you've used spinosad some people use BT we've never used that but if you cannot get a handle on your bug problem with those things then we turn to the Azera it's not something that we use on a regular basis and like you said we've only had to apply it twice this season and we haven't had any other issues uh, to the extreme that we couldn't control with the bug problem you do not want to apply that Azera in your garden no more than 10 times per season. And yes. that's on the extreme case. Yes. And, and, you know, it works. Now, the it's thing about expensive. it is, it's like I'm about to say, the thing about it is, it is very, very expensive. I think we pay like $57 yeah. for this small bottle right here. And this bottle is 8 ounces and 50 something dollars, almost $60 we pay for this bottle here. But in, in the case, it, it was needed. We had to get it. Um, 
because <laughs> those aphids they'll come and suck the juice suck the life out of those scotch bonnet peppers and we we had to take care of that but so far they are they are striving and looking real good but guys i just want to say thanks to each and every one of you all for stopping by the humble servant homestead here today now you like the content you guys got here go ahead throw that thumbs up like subscribe and also share this video here i know it will be helpful to someone else out there and i am hope and i pray that i was very clear on what's going on here with the neem oil and castile soap all right peace and blessings to each and every one of you all have a blessed day